Hello guys and welcome back to another video. So, I was doing a trip down memory lane and I looked at this. This is a video where I did a tier list of all of the different versions of Windows. I was in the process of editing this video. I stopped in the middle of it and I never picked up back up on it. So, this was recorded, as you are going to tell, multiple years ago. Uh, this was like two or three years ago. The only thing that we still had of Windows 11 was the leaked build. That's how far back this was. And so I don't, I haven't watched this video through yet. I haven't picked up editing yet. It's my intention to pick up editing this video because I do think that all my intentions and my opinions are still the same today. So if you just let me you know that this video is old, but still relevant and I think still fun and cool. With that being said, enjoy the video. This is JR Tech and Software. Hello guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to be making a tier list of all of the Windows versions including Windows 11 here. So I just went ahead and created one here in Inkscape. Um, really simple. And yeah, I'm just going to use that. So we're going to start out with Windows 1.0, the very first Windows that like kicked it all off and everything. And I went ahead and loaded up my uh, virtual machine of Windows 1 here, and I'm going to be doing that for the rest. Um, so, Windows 1.0, very first Windows ever released by Microsoft. And um, I'm going to go ahead and put this in... Um, please. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in... I'm feeling a good feature here, because I don't feel like it's so terrible that it belongs in D and F, but it's still not really great. But this it was the uh, version of Windows that began it all um, with the MS-Doc executive here. Um, and actually, you know, I'm going to put an E because there are some things in there that just makes it not like very usable. There's a reason why I don't really show Windows 1 a lot because um, it, there's just not a whole lot to do. Windows 1 is not very functional. Um, there's, like, first of all, like, you, like, you can't even emulate it very well. I've got it here in VirtualBox here, but you can't, like, use a mouse with it without, like, loading in the, uh, mouse drive for Windows 2. Um, because, like, I think back in the day, like, you had to use a serial mouse and instead of the uh, PS2 mouse, which is the one that VirtualBox emulates here. Um, but very simple, you got like basic programs, you know, like the clock and... Okay, so you have to hold Alt and then hit Enter to change it. And, uh, you know, like your class of things, like your so control panel and, you know, very basic, very simple. Um, and of course, to close out, you can see here it's no maximize, minimize, close buttons. You have to use the menu here. Um, here, this is Ubuntu Mate here, but like it scared on in Windows today. You have this close, maximize, and minimize buttons. Those weren't a thing here in the original version of Windows. Like, none of that was a thing. And one of the biggest issues, and one of the reasons why I'm putting it in E tier instead of in C tier like I was originally going to, is because even with the mouse and everything, you can't, this isn't a floating window uh, system. It's a tiling window system. Um, and not really done in a good way, like, not very great, but it is the first version of Windows, to be fair. So, uh, yeah, it's where I'm gonna keep it for now. So, alright, so let's go ahead and close out here, okay? And let's go ahead and close this. 
and let's go ahead and move on to Windows 2 here. I'm gonna do, I got lazy and I didn't put it, them in like any sort of order here. I'm just gonna be doing them in the version that they, in the order that they came out. Windows 2 has to be the, the one over the first, where the first version of Windows is because it adds a uh, floating functionality. Let me just go ahead and uh, start up the uh, virtual machine here and you'll see what I mean. First of all, this does use a PS2 mouse, so it does actually work in VirtualBox and in like uh, VMware. Um, it, you can see here, it works fine. I'm using the mouse here. And, that, and the reason why this goes above where Windows 1 was is simply because floating windows. We can have the MS-DOS executive here and we can open up a uh, windows right here and that can be shown above the window of the MS-DOS executive here. So we can be typing things and then like okay well I need to make a calculation here on the calculator alright let's just go back to the MS-DOS executive and bring up the uh, calculator program. Alright so here it is and I'm gonna throw this down here for a reason and let's say we we need to find out what 5 divided by 3 is because we need that to uh, type what we need that for uh, whatever we're typing here so let's go ahead and throw this down here hopefully to where we can see it when we stop this and then we can do 5 by, by 5 divided by 3 equals 1.2 and there we go we it's very we can multitask very very easily here um, much better than uh, much better than Windows 1 um, and we also have the maximize and minimize buttons um, we still don't have a dedicated close button but uh, one thing that you can do is just double click this little dash here and that will just do the normal thing of uh, closing windows or you can just do it clicking that and opening up me here and closing and as you can see all that for is a keyboard shortcut that we can use um, so yeah but still you know the graphics here aren't very good the MS DOS executive as a way of execute of opening up your programs isn't very intuitive this is pretty much just a glorified uh, file manager pretty much and even if that <laughs> So that is why it's being in C tier. Not a terrible operating environment, just not as great as, like, you still got some issues here with usability, but it's definitely starting to catch on. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and rate Windows 3. So Windows 3 here definitely has to be better than Windows 2. Um, this was the first time that um, Windows was trying to catch on. It got much more popular with the uh, public here with Windows 3. Um, let's go ahead and go ahead and boot up our Windows 3. This is much better. This uh, program manager is a much easier way to access all of your programs here. Um, it, you can see here, not really as intuitive as the start menu that we have today. Um, but it is still a much better way of, of accessing all of your programs on your computer um, than Windows uh, than Windows 1 and 2 were. It's just much more graphically inclined here. We have icons to represent our programs here um, and all the, in these little groups here uh, so that we can um, more easily see what's installed in, on our computer and more easily um, access it here. So, of course, we got all the standard things. I haven't been really been showing what all's installed here in Windows, but this didn't really change from Windows 1 and 2. The only thing that's here that wasn't in Windows 1 and 2 was uh, probably the file manager and solitaire. I believe every, maybe the pith editor too, 
but everything else I believe was also in Windows 1 and Windows 2 but as you can see here much easier way of seeing what is installing your computer and much more organized in these little groups here um here's games from here and we of course in windows 3 we still have reverse from uh windows which was the game that was bundled in windows 1 and windows 2 here still playable here very nice of course we still have our um we still have our clothes menu uh button him behind there you can double click that or you can click that and click close, you can see all that for still thing. Really cool uh, interface here. Uh, so yeah, this is definitely much better above Windows 1 and Windows 2. But I wouldn't say it's quite yet an A tier. We are still missing things that makes this a much more usable uh, thing. You know, the start menu, start button, taskbar, and all that still isn't here. So yeah, the question is where to put this. It's either in B tier or in A tier. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I want, I definitely, I'm not gonna say it's an S tier. It's still got issues. So I'm, I, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the uh, B tier here. That seems like a, a good place to put it in. So our next one is Windows 3.1 here. And by the way, I'm skipping all the NT 3.X uh, series because like NT wasn't right like mainstream until and I didn't import the uh, Windows NT 4 graphic NT. Went into wasn't really mainstream until NT 1. Let's go ahead and take care of that real quick. All right, there we go. Windows NT 4 is chilling there. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna put it in B because it's much better than Windows 2 and Windows 1, but it's definitely, um, not S tier and maybe A tier, but I would say that Windows 3.1 would be the more A tier one. So yeah, that's where I'm gonna put everything for now. Now, where do I put Windows 3.1? Because it was definitely an improvement to Windows 3. But I don't know if it was enough of an improvement to put it a whole tier above it. And that's mainly where I'm going to throw with it. It did have many usability and quality of life improvements. But, like, well, things like that. And, of course, it, it, you know what, let's just bring up a Windows 3.1 machine here. And I'll show you guys the whole, like, different tweaks, especially to the graphics that... Windows 3.1 made, which I just, oh, there's also the splash here, which is my, my, very nice, um, I guess I misconfigured something, but as you can see, much more vibrant, I do really like the, like, different, like, subtle, but, like, subtle differences to Windows 3. Point one that Windows 3 didn't have, and that's pretty much all it is for a uh, Windows 3.1. Not too much different from Windows 3. There's just tiny little tweaks that do make it a much nicer uh, thing to use. But I don't think it's enough to put it into a tier. So I'm gonna put it with Windows 3 there. Um, it is slightly above. You know, I might even but place it up a tiny bit. Alright, so our next one here is Windows 95, and this has to at least be A tier. However, if it's S tier or not, I'm not completely sure, to be honest. So, Windows 95 did a whole lot of stuff to improve the experience. First of all, Windows 95 definitely feels like more of a dedicated operating system. Something I haven't been saying is up and was up until like Windows NT came out, Windows was not an operating system. Windows was an operating environment. It's a GUI that was like placed on top of MS DOS way of using MS DOS. But MS DOS is still the core of all of this. And in fact, Windows was just a program that you ran from MS DOS and then you get into this. Um, environment here. Oh cool, the Windows 95 startup sound. Now, uh, I have the plus pack installed on here, which changes a lot of the way that this works. Um, like this, for example, like moving around the window and the window actually responding, that was not um, in there originally. Like this, at the core of it, this is still MS-DOS 
this is not its own operating system and we can prove that by being able to shut down and uh, close or uh, restart the computer in MS-DOS mode. You can see here it plays the uh, shutdown sound and it simply comes into MS-DOS here. It, it's essentially closing Windows like what we did back in Windows, uh, Windows 3 and 3.1 and you can type in Win as we would have done to uh, back in uh, Windows 3, 3.1, 1 and 2 and all that um, to launch us back into Windows. And so yeah, but anyways, on to the actual Windows 95 itself. <laughs> Uh, Windows 95 was revolutionary because it brought, for the first time, the start button, the taskbar, and the desktop. It brought the whole com um, Explorer suite, like all the features that you get when, um, like in modern Windows by running Explorer, all that was introduced in Windows 95 plus um, user accounts. Um, now this wasn't technically, um, but this wasn't fully implemented, like, in the way that it is now, until Windows XP, um, uh, but if we find a user, actually, um, I gotta go ahead and log out, but if we enter a different username here, call it Control A, didn't do that, but Control Shift and left still does that, alright, so, um, we just user and then that will automatically create a new user and you can set a password and do pass and you can see here we are into our computer all we did was create a new user there and now we can um, get in now we're into our computer and I don't even have to enter in my, pass, my first password and I can go to my computer here. We didn't really have proper permission set up, I don't believe. This could be me wrong here, though. Oh, this was an annoyance. <laughs> the fact that when you go into a new folder, it, it opens it up in a new window. We don't really have separation between users, um, essentially. The user accounts are probably more of a thing in Windows NT. I haven't really tested that yet, and in fact, I might test that for the first time today. Uh, but uh, it's like n Windows accounts technically exist, but they're just not what they are today in the slightest. But yeah, Windows 95, very revolutionary, and without Windows 95, I don't know what computers would be like right now. Now, where to rank it though? It's definitely at least an A tier because, like I said, it completely revolutionized the way that we use um, computers. But, like, is it S tier? I'm not sure. <laughs> because there are still some, like, like, for example, I would say Windows 98 just made some minor improvements. Kind of like the way that Windows 3 did, to, that Windows 3.1 did to Windows 3. Um, made some improvements like in the back end. And when I'm talking Windows 98, I'm talking about second edition. Like I said, Windows 3.1 to Windows 3, Windows 3.1 like made tiny little improvements to the, the graphics I use. Um, Windows 98 did the same thing to Windows 95. And I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and, um, rate these, like, together, but, are any, I'd say S tier for me, um, if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments, obviously, but let me know, um, but, like, this is also my tier list, what uh, my opinions are on these, I'm not completely sure if Windows 95 is an S tier for me, it's just not one of my favorite favorites I and mean, I would say S tier the operating systems that belong in S tier have to be my favorites Windows 95 even though it completely changed that the way that we use computers I'm not sure if it's an S tier for me so I'm gonna go and put it in A tier Windows 98 I'm tempted to do the same thing I did for 3.1 here 
put in same tier because like I said, I don't know if it's an S tier for me. I don't know if it quite gets to that S tier status that other operating systems will be. I think I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do the same thing as I did for Windows 3 and 3.1 there. But anyways, I skipped over Windows NT4. NT4 goes in the same as um, a 95 because not a whole lot changed between 95 and NT4. Now, NT4 was rock solid, like, it is very stable, but is it enough to put in an S tier? I don't think so, personally. I'm gonna go ahead and shut that down, and I'm gonna keep it in A tier. Uh, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm putting it in S tier. I do think that this is enough better than Windows 98 and Windows 95 that it's going to be an S tier. Just little things, but those things are bigger things in the uh, whole 3 and 3.1 relation that we have going on here. So now for 2000, and if you guys saw my previous deal on me ranking uh, Windows versions, and you probably could tell where this is going. Windows 2000, same as ND4, um, not solid, it just works, and, uh, yeah, I have nothing against Windows 2000, it was an amazing operating system, and, yeah, <laughs> of course, based on the rock solid, uh, kernel of Windows NT, and, um, it just works like a charm, honestly, it's really good operating system, good job, Microsoft, S tier for me. Now Windows Me, and, um, yeah, do we even have to explain this? Like, everyone should have known where this is going. It is an F. <laughs> Windows Me was so bad. <laughs> and, it, yeah, it, it's an F. And let's move on. Windows XP, once again, if you saw my, uh, making Windows, uh, versions video, it is an S tier. So Windows... XP. Let's just go and boot it up here now. It's probably I haven't turned this on in a very long time, so it's probably gonna warn me about it. I might not even actually be able to lock it. To be honest, here we are, and um, yeah, let's talk about Windows XP here. In my opinion, it's amazing. <laughs> um, I really do like. The uh, look, a lot of people did not like the look of uh, the Luna theme, but honestly, I just like the look of it. I don't know why I like it so much, but um, it was pretty cool. <laughs> of course, you have Windows. Um, this was the first version um, that, of course, here, if I, uh, on a Winver here, you'll see that this, I'm running Home Edition, but Microsoft decided to um, merge the uh, tracks, of course, like I was talking about here before, NT and um, the 9X, which is what 95 and 98 were, were two kind of different versions of Windows XP. Of course, uh, Windows 9X was meant for consumers, and Windows NT was meant for um, businesses, like I talked about before. Um, but, um, Windows XP kind of merged these two and brought to what we know today as, like, two different versions of the same product. There's a home edition, there's a professional edition. I'm running the home edition here. It was all running off of the NT kernel, which was superior, like I said before. It was, it just, um, ran off of NTFS as the uh, file system here. Um, but yeah, if you want to learn more about what my feelings on Windows XP, I probably talked about all these operating systems, um, in much more depth in my ranking, uh, Windows versions video. So I'm just going to go ahead and shut this down here and rank the next, um, version of Windows, which was Windows Vista. Now, um, I would recommend that you watch my story of Windows Vista video. Um, to understand why I'm not ranking this in F and why I'm ranking it into C. Because Windows Vista is just misunderstood, honestly. You know what? Um, it's either a C or a D to me. 
it's not enough. Many people would do exactly what I did with me and just go, does it, do I need to need an explanation? And just put it here and ask along with one of me. I'm not doing that. But it's just that I was just not ready when it was actually released. Like, the Windows Vista that we know today, um, only, it was only developed on for two years, and for the massive changes that it was making to Windows XP, it deserved more. Um, and by the time it's even Surf Pack 1, mo much less Surf Pack 2, by the time those came out, Windows Vista was ready, and it was actually a pretty decent operating system. It's just not liked upon today. Um, so I think I'm actually going to put it in D here because I do think it's on the same level with Windows 1. Yes, the RTM of the store is bad, but, um, just like Windows 1, it, I'm not putting in F because even though on the surface it might seem like these two aren't F, they're really not. Windows 7, you probably all know this, it is going in the S tier. <laughs> It has to. It was, it's my favorite operating system. I'm going to say that Windows 7, even with Windows 11 coming on along here, Windows 7 was the last good operating system made by Microsoft. And I don't even have to fire up a VM to tell you why. Windows 7, like I said in my Vista video, was Windows Vista, but actually done right. The arrow theme was very good. We had the little thing here where you can shove a window. Actually, it's not going to work here. You shove a window against the left side of the screen. And automatically puts it there. Um, and see, just little things like that. All of those things still are in users' minds today when they use it. When they use their computers. is okay, if this if window, I just launched it. it it's not maximized. So... I'm just going to throw it up here, and it's going to do it for me. Very good. Um, very polished, very stable. Even to this day, I still have a Windows VM that I use quite a lot, especially when I'm developing for Windows computers, because Windows was the, like I said, last good version of Windows. Windows 8, same with Windows at me. Do I really have to explain this? I, I think that Windows 8 is kind of universally hated. And it's because of exactly what the screenshot is here. A start screen. Windows 8 went out of its way to be touch friendly. And in doing so, completely ruined what we know of, of Windows as. Now Windows 8.1 didn't make improvements on this. I just didn't improve the screenshot. Windows 8.1 would probably be in D tier. Because it's better on Windows 8, but not that much. And for Windows 10, this is probably going to be the most controversial of my rankings. Windows 10, C or in D or C. Alright, and let me tell you why. Because I don't like the changes that they made to the interface here. Cortana is dumb. Um, the start menu, the new start menu in Windows 10 is dumb. <laughs> um, it just, in general, runs slower than I, I, at least that's the way I feel. Um, and that could just be me as well. Uh, like, all my hardware is at least five years old. So that very well could be me, that's, but that's just in my experience. I just don't like running Windows 10. And of course, I haven't opened the bag of, like the can of worms that comes with the privacy issue that Windows 10 has. The, uh, the Microsoft Store is dumb and no one uses it. The only good version of the Microsoft Store is gonna be here in Windows 11. But, to his credit, Windows 10 was still a big step up from Windows 8. So yeah, Windows 10, not an A tier, not an S tier, not even B tier. And I'm debating whether I'm gonna say that it's not even C tier. I honestly don't know where to put this. I don't think it deserves to be the, as low as, like, close to the F tier here. I do think that it 
could be considered to be slightly better than Vista. But how better is it? Is it Man, I'm gonna say whether it's as good as Windows 2 or not. Sure, we'll put it in C. We'll put it in C tier. It's in C tier. <laughs> Alright, like, so it's in C tier. It's kind of straight in the middle of everything. It's kind of like the way I'm gonna say it here. Windows 11. Now, I haven't really made any videos since me, but I had an idea that Windows 11 was coming um, last year time I made a video was back at the end of April but and by then we are we still were believing that Windows 10 was gonna be the last Windows and all that and I debated a little bit whether I was gonna leave Windows 11 in this video just because it's beta we really don't we have a good idea of what Windows 11 is gonna be but we could it's still experimental at this point it could still change in the future um, but as for what we know, I felt like I should probably put Windows 11 in here. How does this rank with everything? Well, it's definitely not below where Windows 10 is. It is at least at where Windows 10 is right now. And I definitely think that it is an improvement on Windows 10. So I don't think I'm going to... I don't think Windows 11 belongs in C, D, or F. But to be honest, I haven't played with Windows 11 enough myself. Like, I watch plenty of videos on the two betas that we know of as of this time, the time of this re recording of this video, whatever. Um, we have the, like, developer preview, and then, of course, we had that leaked build about a month ago. Um, but other than that, like, I haven't, I'm not part of the Windows Insider program. I haven't really, um, I haven't really spent time, uh, with this. So I'm relying on what I've seen from other people's videos. And from what I can tell, it's gonna be better than Windows 10. It's gonna fix a lot of those issues I have with Windows 10. But I still don't think that it is an S tier. It is definitely not an S tier. It is not on the same levels of Windows NT4, 2000, XP, and 7. I'm not even sure if it's an A tier, to be honest. It's either B tier or an A tier to me. I don't think it's an A tier. Alright. And, like I said, this, my opinion of this could and probably will change um, into the future here as we see more of what Windows 11 is. And, um, I don't know, of course, like at the end of the year, um, when it's implemented into, into, like, when it's actually released and everything. There we go. This is my tier list. Oh. Alright, so what does my tier list look like now? You, I added in some of my, um, new opinions here that differ. So, what is it now, though? This is what it is. I still have the file of the project that I made here. So I shifted NT4 down to A tier. And I shifted Windows 11 way down from E tier to D tier. Um, everything else I completely stand by in my opinion. Um, except for maybe a couple things I commented in the video. Um, about Windows 95 is where I took over to editing as of the last few days. So yeah, S tier is Windows 2000, XP, and 7. A tier is 95, 98, and NT4. B tier is going to be 3 and 3.1. C tier is going to be 2 and 10. D tier is going to be 1, Vista, and 11. And F tier is, of course, me and 8. So there you guys go. I'm going to return back to the video for the outro because I rambled on a bunch more about everything. Let's just skip to the outro. This is of course mine though. How how would yours change? What things do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments. Just keep the comment section civil please. <laughs> Let me know how what changes would you make to this? Let me know down in the comments. And if you like this video, please leave a please leave a like. And if you like my other videos, then please subscribe. 
and I'll see you in the next video.